need to have it for. Yeah, so typically, first of all, I just want to go over for you just for the record. Uh, and I've heard some actual recent discussions about salaries for elected officials um, and how they're uh, derived. There actually is Oregon law that says exactly how they're required to be determined. So ORS 204-112 sub 3. It sets your task for determining comp uh, compensation. And essentially, I'm just going to read reference to that essentially that you shall annually review the compensation paid to persons comparably employed by the state of Oregon, local public bodies, and private businesses within a labor market deemed appropriate by the board for each elective officer. A lot of times people say that you know you should compare to another county or not or you should compare to this or not. The law actually says what you compare to. Um, it says what you shall take into account when you do that comparison. It says that you shall take into account such factors as the number of employees supervised, the size of the budget administered by each elective officer, the duties and responsibilities of each elective officer, and the compensation paid to subordinates and other appointed employees who serve in positions of comparable management responsibility. And it says that you shall prepare and approve by majority uh, vote a recommended compensation schedule for the elected officers and shall submit that recommended compensation schedule to the county governing body. So we do that after you decide what you want to do. Usually in the past ask me to pre present that uh, to the board. Um, essentially, several years back, you kind of came to determine a pretty standard process by which you would consider compensation increases for elected officials uh, as the law says uh, providing uh, comparison by other employees, employees who serve in positions of comparable management responsibility we took each of those elected positions and classified them as if they were an appointed position we also provided the data for comparison between those local state of Oregon uh, pu public and private businesses within the labor market um, so you directed that their compensation shall be mapped to comparable positions within the county, which also consider similar issues. Uh, and it, the plan thereby relies heavily on internal uh, equity to establish classifications. The local bu uh, public bodies uh, within the labor market that we draw on uh, include other cities and counties. Those are specified in the packet, which I'll go over with you here in a second. Um, obviously, we had some difficulty getting information from private sector employees because they're not required to release it to us and a lot of them don't want to. Um, so um, we have had local, uh, local internal hires that have similar comparable positions in the uh, private sector that we feel um, at least uh, mitigate the lack of information showing us that we are uh, competitive and comparable. So as I said, we did do a classification of each of those positions on page two of this packet. You have each of those classifications, how they were compared, and I'm going to take an example. The sheriff, obviously having one of the largest departments in, this, in the county, was compared at a director three level. That's the same as the community justice director, the health and human services director, and the road director. So the level of responsibility is a large department. There's a great deal of complex analysis and problem solving using individual, individual judgment, creative thinking. Management skills are primary and technical skills are secondary. It involves decisions made that greatly impact citizens as well as other county departments. They establish department goals, policies, and strategies to achieve county objectives. And they supervise professional and management staff. So that would be the highest level of comparison. Uh, I think if we go down here, the lowest level comparison was the justice of the peace, which is the similar to a program manager one. So those examples are like our library manager who presented the budget to you today, and our animal uh, shelter and control manager. So they have a small program or project. They contribute strongly. Uh, they're directly responsible for the end result of their decisions. They do supervise technical and professional skills and ex expertise uh, as equally important. They also have complex analysis and judgment thinking. Uh, and then action may be taken within general department policies and procedures, and they might supervise support staff. So that's how they're classed. Each person you can see is classed as if, I said, as if they were appointed. That's one of the criteria in the law. 
The next page actually looks at the other counties, and you'll see what we did is uh, take those one, two, three, four, five counties, determine a mean, our comparison to the mean. Um, for purposes of this and the other argument, I'm, I'm not even going to discuss the commissioner salaries with you because they agreed to, this will be the fourth year, they agreed three years ago to have their salaries frozen and not be considered for any step increases. Uh, only for COLAs if we authorize them, and we didn't authorize a COLA last year or this year, so their salaries aren't being considered for adjustment. They agreed to that, and you agreed to that, so I'm assuming that's uh, the way you want to go. But for the other ones, first of all, we compared them internally to the county. Secondly, uh, if you look at the compensation here, you'll see that the uh, step two, for example, at the assessor is 6.66 below the mean. The clerk at the top step is 0.08% above the mean, so less than one-tenth of 1% 1 at the top step. The district attorney is 6.10 below the mean. The justice of the peace at step five is 0.58% above the mean. The sheriff is 2.79% above the mean, and that's at the top step. Um, at the bottom step, they would be 20% below the mean. So when someone new gets elected, they come in lower and work through the steps. Uh, the surveyor is 7.07 percent below the mean. So essentially, we consider 5 percent within uh, the comparables to be comparable. You'll see that all those are pretty close, or will be as they work through the steps. Now, there are some difficulties in comparing some of these because, for example, in some counties, the surveyor, the assessor, and the clerk are appointed rather than elected. So there's footnotes here that explain all of those. Uh, differences between how we compare them uh, so they're qualified just so you know this is the same process we went through last year the year before and the year before that the next place uh, the next page a couple of pages actually shows each position based on the cola adjustment and as I said there is no cola last in the current year there I'm recommending no cola adjustment I'm sorry I'm sorry so back on this sheet from the other counties <clears throat> There's some notations down here that, for example, Clackamas County elected officials receive 6.27% for compensation. Is that reflected in those dollars up above, those salary dollars up above, or is that in addition to that? Or It's in addition to that. It is in this and so, so you factored those things in. Okay, all right, thank you. Sorry. The footnotes are, in, uh, are yeah. explaining yeah. The, those differences, yeah. Okay, any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. So the next page essentially takes each position based on the COLA, and since we're not giving a COLA, number one does that, the number one heading, it's not gonna be applicable because it's not gonna change the salary. Um, the district attorney's position is not assigned to an equivalent because they're actually a state employee and we pay them a stipend. So they're not, they, there's nothing to compare them to. They make, the district attorney makes more than every department head we have. Um, but the stipend shows the range that we pay. So last year was her first year in office. This year she would be at step two. Um, and then the next one is the um, step increases for those who qualify. So, you know, the clerk, uh, the sheriff, I think, are the only two at the top of their steps. Everyone else, I would suggest that you're, based on your previous direction to us, is that they would move to the next step with, that they're eligible for. And those, I do have those outlined um, on the last page. Let me get this one right. So if you look at the assessor, um, they'll go step two to step three. Um, and there's an arrow there where, where it's highlighted. Oh, there's not highlighted. That's not quite the last page. There you go. So like the assessor, you see the orange, they go from step two to step three. The clerk's already at the top step. The com commissioners are staying frozen where they're at. <clears throat> the justice of the peace would go to step from step five to step six. The sheriff's already at the top step. The survey would go, survey would go from step two to step three, and the district attorney would go from the stipend step two to stipend step three. And um, in past years, you have 
qualified those um, salaries that if someone replaces, is either appointed or elected midterm, that they would come in instead of one. Um, all the normal qualifications. So the main thing here, I guess, is do you want us to move them through the steps like you, the pay plan you guys approved several years back? Um, and those would be the steps that they're at based on the pay plan you directed us to prepare. And if you do, we'll prepare the order and I can present it, or you, you guys can present it. It doesn't matter to me. So, two issues, right? The step, agree to the step, and secondly, that we'll have no COLA. Yeah, I didn't budget a COLA for. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, we probably should vote on that. Too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Along with the standard language we include about, you know, if, if someone leaves office or. And someone gets appointed or elected midterm, they come in as so. Let's handle that then first. Either Can I ask a question to, first? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the classified employees did not receive a COLA, but they are getting their steps? All employees that are eligible for steps increases, yeah. classified, or just paid plan are budgeted steps. Okay. So that you answered my second question, which is the non classified, not elected directors. Also, if they're eligible for steps, they, they're getting them, but no cost of living price. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, let me do say uh, that there are some contractual reasons for that, even for non-classified people, because their job offers come with contingencies that they'll be eligible for those steps, so long as their performance provides. It's not just that they get a step. They have to have a successful performance evaluation, sure. and then they qualify for that step uh, if they're not already at the top step. And that's the same for the union. Now, the classified employees, the only ones that are getting a call are the sheriff's department because that was what the arbitrator ruled in year three. And FAPO is still being negotiated, so we, we don't know. Okay. Um, uh, the biggest union agreed to know. They agreed to whatever we did for the managers and confidential employees and elected officials in terms of a COLA. So they've agreed to no COLA because I'm authorizing no COLA for the managers yeah. and confidential yeah. employees. Yeah. Right. Cool. So the only real difference is that the elected officials really don't have an appraisal process. Well, they do. You guys created one last year. Um, and Linda called to see if you wanted to do it again this year, and you didn't want to. But maybe that you wanted to do it every other year. So, and I don't know if we call it an appraisal process or an interview, but whatever it was, it was meant to satisfy your, your knowledge of how those issues were that you asked them to report on were, were being accomplished. I would suggest that uh, you, you have your meetings with your own staff, and if maybe we could tag on, I mean, if we could uh, tag on a meeting and, or figure out if we want to have a review next year and tag it on to one of your meetings so we don't have another date to worry about. Like the departmental review budget review, you mean? Yeah. Well, we, we could. I mean, those kind of, I mean. Or talk about sentence. Yeah, maybe setting a separate day would be better for me, just because I know you guys are here for the reviews, but then I have a whole lot of work to do after the review happens. Sure. Would it, but I'd like to do it earlier than we talked about it this year. Maybe yeah. we could throw a follow-up or a reminder in the file. And okay. We could talk about it in one of the, your, your earliest meeting. The December March. meeting. Huh? The December meeting, you could decide when yeah, you want to do it. we could decide at the December meeting if we wanted one. I don't see it every other, every year, but I mean every two years, three years. I think that would be appropriate to go through that process. Um, so, any more questions before we talk about seeing what we agree on here? Uh, you want to want us to? Well, does everybody agree that if somebody gets uh, resigns and somebody's reappointed to that position, they should go back to the salary in range one of that? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. We all agree on that. So Absolutely. I think we the vote. The law does say that you have to prepare a vote to recommend. So, what I would say is, if you you can do this in one that you agree to no colas. That you agree for step increases for those who qualify, and you agree at setting the yeah, standard. I, I at want step to go one. through it and handle it individually, and then okay. we can have a vote. Okay. If you need a vote, we'll take a vote. Then. Yeah. 
I don't really need one, but the law says you have to have one, so you should do it. Yeah. <laughs> Does any, uh, April, do you agree we do want to uh, have a uh, goal increase or not? Or not to, but I think we should have one. Uh, <laughs> I think we should. Yeah, I think it would be inappropriate if we, well, Greg, how do you feel? <coughs> I don't think we should have a cola. I'm sorry, cola. I don't need it, so I think we should have that. <clears throat> now, do we need to uh, go on with the recommendation that we follow our step increases? We do. Yes, on that. Yes, I agree. Okay. So tell me what vote you want. I think oh. that was a vote, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I would move approval of all three. Greg, you got a second, I think. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Anyone opposed? No. Okay. So, you got what you need to put it into a, what do you call a written uh, order? Order. Yeah. And this, this actually was the whole reason why you adopted the step plan, mm -hmm. so that you would have uh, a pretty simple discussion about it. New people come in at step one. If they are fortunate enough to be reelected, they make it all the way to the top step. <coughs> I think yeah. at least I would have had a little more discussion if any one of the budget committee uh, members were new this year. We might want to talk about a little more in depth of what you went over in case they had some questions. But all of us have been through this one. So. <coughs> It's very well delineated in the package that I gave you about the law, what you told us to do, what we did, how we compared, where we get the outside comparables, the other counties, and then the adjustments for each of the considerations you made, and where people are going to be paid. I'd like to <clears throat> talk a little bit about the these interviews and this policy that we set up last year to interview the elected officials. And I, I, I thought that the interviews that we had last year were, for lack of a better word, awkward. That, and, and I'd like to be able to structure when we do them again a little bit differently. And I think for us to give some heads up to um, the elected officials that next year we'd like to have a format that would be a little more easier for both, both sides of the table. Okay. So my thinking is is that it would be helpful if the elected officials establish themselves goals for next year and that when they met with us next spring, they could talk about how they were achieving those goals. And I think we hinted around that last year when we talked to them, but I think it would make the conversation a lot easier if they were coming forward to us and saying, these are the goals and objectives I set for my department and for myself this year, um, and here's my progress today. And I don't mind sharing that message, but I'll tell you that you asked for that initially last time as well. I know that. And they were not comfortable doing that, especially ones that were running for office because they didn't want to provide fodder for people who were maybe running against them or be critiqued unfairly against someone who was running against them. And so. I don't know how you have that conversation. You you all you all told me to let them know that they don't have to come and say a word. Mm -hmm. But then you also qualify it with you don't come and say a word, you're not pretty much moving through the step plan. Right. So I mean you do you, you do set their salaries and I mean you probably can pretty much request whatever you want. And I don't mind I mean, but it needs to be at least a majority of you yeah, right, right, uh, right. agreeing to that. I agree with that. They had some pretty significant not all of them. But some of them had some pretty significant hesitation about doing that. It just occurs to me, this is just my personal opinion, that elected officials have a responsibility to the public to let the public know how they are or are not goal setting and how well they're achieving um, those goals. So I, I personally feel like it's an extremely appropriate conversation. Um, it needs to be had somewhere. That's just my thinking. My thing is the same, but they seem to have some trouble with it. it there's no way to make that meeting that close to me. It's a public meeting. 
even though it's with an individual person. Two of you constitute a quorum. You could each meet with them one-on-one, -on -one and that's not a public meeting. You can do that. But you can't meet with them, two of you, at one time, without it being a public meeting. Well, yeah, I can see their problem from their point of view. Well, I can see. It'd, it'd be it's nice to be able to have them speak, uh, you know, objectively and uh, say what they think and not have to uh, worry about every word you say. If you can't, you can't. You have any there, ideas? There's, act there's actually a provision for my position in law that allows it to be done in executive session. I choose not to have it done in executive session. I choose to have it done in public session, and it's my choice. But I could have it done in executive session. They don't have that provision in law. Why don't we divide up the three of us and uh, each of us take mm -hmm. one, uh, four people and do one by one? Mm -hmm. Report back. And yeah. When you do report back, that will be a public session. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. So they won't be straightforward as they might be one on one. They won't be reporting back. Hmm. Can you have your meeting in executive session and video record it and allow us three of us to watch it? <laughs> mine? Hmm? Yeah, he's talking about his performance about I'm talking about mine. Oh, oh, yes. oh I'm yeah, you're about <clears throat> I thought you were implying that you could meet with oh, the no. No, okay. elected officials one-on-one. -on -one well, I can meet with them one-on-one -on -one anytime. In and fact, I meet with goals and, yeah. and, and video that's, recorded? Um, I can, however, that would be a public record. Yeah. It would be subject to public records yeah. requests. Hmm. Well, I don't know what else we talk to them about when we have these meetings. If we can't talk to them about openly about their performance, what's the point of having meetings? That's for sure. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. No, I, I realize. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying. Last year, you asked me to facilitate well, yeah. getting their agreement between the separation between what both of you mm -hmm. thought it should entail. And we and I worked with uh, Chair Rudisal back and forth on a list of questions got your concurrence with those questions and their concurrence with those questions and I guess what you can tell them is they didn't get deep enough for you into more detail. And then, I mean we can go back to the drawing board and start over with the questions. Um, I don't mind doing that at all. I mean frankly I mean I'm staffed to support you guys however you want but you also can sit down with them and knock out about how you're going to you know, go about it. It would be a public meeting but that's fine. You would discuss how, how you can get what you feel you need to uh, you know to determine whether or not you're going to consider moving you know, through the steps. Because we do we do that for all of our other employees. However, those are exempt public records. Right. Right. This all started, I think, when we said that uh, we didn't want them to get in their mind that this was an automatic interest. Right. And probably started with a uh, friend uh, to get his name to the air. Yeah. It did. And uh, I guess the question we have to answer, I, uh, thinking about it, is is it worth it if it isn't really effective or they don't really want to be open about it? or we got to be less than open with them. Uh, well, I think or is it better be just to uh, about it. live with it? There's only six of them, and here's the schedule. And they've got, their test is against the public. If they don't, aren't doing a good job, they've, uh, they'll lose their job. Maybe the public is the best way to uh, on the one side, not having that would be to say, hey, we can't uh, do anything about it anyway except not recommend them for an increase. The only way that I can see people. But we can do that anyway if we don't like the way they, you know, say somebody does something pretty outrageous and 
doesn't come to work and really isn't doing their job, and it's pretty obvious their department's uh, running right and, you know, they're pretty damn unhappy with them. I guess we, have to, we can single them out and say, you know, we're not going to give them a step increase this year. You also can reduce their salary. Or we can reduce it if we want to. And uh, if they're doing a normal job <coughs> and moving along, uh, doing you know what you expect, even though if you're not, they aren't doing the best job. That's not our job to determine. I guess that's the public's job. And if they aren't doing the job, uh, they'll have to run for election. Somebody else will. Be <coughs> Those are the extremes. So the conversation between Danny and the chair of the budget committee. As long as people are performing where you think they ought to be. I don't want anything to do with that. Well, you can meet with them anyway and review what they're doing. I didn't mind providing my input when you asked, but I don't want to be the assessor of elected officials, the assessment of whether they're doing a good job or not. It's not my job. And I, Whose job is it? The public's. It's your job to figure out what you want to do with their salary, and I understand that. That's different than whether or not they're doing a good job. Not my job to determine whether an elected official is doing their job or not. It's the public's job. Well, no way. When, when I, I'm just uh, following through on the office of thinking here a little bit. <clears throat> Trying to see what I think, truly think. Whatever we decide, yeah, we decide the public, uh, elected official salary, but it still goes before the budget committee and has to be approved by the full budget committee. It actually not only has to be approved by the full budget, but it has to be approved by the governing body when they adopt the budget. When they adopt the budget. Well, the chair so what would happen if, uh, let's say, the commissioner, you had a real rebel group on here, it's not us, and they have voted to cut everybody's salary by 20%, and they didn't agree, the three commissioners didn't agree with it, and uh, there's a uh, three to three vote in the uh, budget. How would that work? It would stay what it is now. It would. So they have the. So, so what would happen if you all agreed with something and the board of commissioners don't? Mm -hmm. You're an advisory committee to them, and mm -hmm. so whatever it is that they decide technically is what would happen. Yeah. The chair when the they meet as the commissioners. Yeah, right. whatever the quorum of them decides. Yeah. If the, the chair of the board of commissioners could provide feedback to this group. There, there's a way that you can get around it, and the way that you would get around that is each of you would have to meet with them individually, the elected officials individually, each form your own opinion of how it was that they were performing, and then vote when you came to this meeting, and without necessarily discussion the reasons why or not, um, you could certainly cast your vote and decide whether you wanted to give them that step. And you could discuss it if you wanted to, but you wouldn't have to. Yeah, but if you did, it would be a public record and a public meeting. Right. What I'd rather do if that was the case is hang the light on an exception basis. I would too. And if we got a commissioner or an elected official we're damn unhappy with, and uh, we need to do something with it, then I would say my suggestion would be we single that person out and eat each of us, or we elect somebody amongst the three of us to meet with the person. Mm -hmm and bring that back to this meeting. I prefer that rather than meeting. I would too. <laughs> Maybe that's a better way to do mm -hmm. this, because the other way I might do it was pretty still that didn't, yeah. right. didn't accomplish anything. Wait. That's why I said right. when Danny called me, uh, let's pass on that. I'm glad you brought it up. You wanna, <clears throat> do we need to do anything to undo what we did? Yeah. I mean, unless you want to decide you want to meet with somebody. No, no. I don't want to meet it with anybody. And I think what we were saying, we're going to cancel this uh, commissioners come in, or the elected officials come in and meet with the salary review committee on their performance. Okay. 
and then if we do have a problem and uh, we meet or we think we've really got a problem or you bring one to us, then we'll make a decision on that basis and either meet individually with the person or select somebody to meet with them or two people to meet with them and so you can meet in private and work it out. So maybe what I'm hearing is that if either Danny or any one of the three commissioners have a concern about any one of the elected officials, they would reach out to our chair and we would determine whether we want to have additional meetings, yeah. public or otherwise. Whether we want to have a public meeting or yes. whether we want a private meeting, we can uh -huh. two of us yeah. sit down and listen to the person. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. Not two of you, just one. Just one. one. Two well, of you is a corner. Yeah, that's right. It can't be two, can it? You, you know, in terms of in terms of my input to this, you know, while I said that I don't uh, determine whether someone does a good job or not, you know, there are actions I've taken because of like the officials yes. not doing yeah. their jobs appropriately. Yes. Like yeah. when right. they overspend their appropriation authority, I do something about it, and that yes. is something I tell the budget committee because <laughs> it's a violation of law or any of those other things that I've brought to you. You you'll know that. If if, if there's an issue, it's because I had to do something to correct action that was not appropriate. And, and I would support that as long as you're in the chair or you're in the job you're in. <clears throat> and I would say there's a, I don't want to mention a name, but there, we all know, there was a really good example of you, CW, and myself who met with an elected official. And, and uh, I think I think it was a very effective meeting. And it, uh, produce the results we wanted and I think we're all satisfied with it and didn't need to go any further than that. And that's probably the best way to handle this. So I have another question. The commissioners have declined their increases for a couple of years now. They're not, they've asked not to even have them. You haven't even offered them. I realize that. Okay. So are we going to leave this range the way it is? Well, there, there's going to be a can of worms. I realize that okay. there's going to be different commissioners. I realize that. That's my point exactly. I, I think if we give a cost of living increase, that was the agreement with Don that they would be entitled to that. What I'm suggesting is we're going to have several new commissioners. They may well want to be on the step increase. It'll right. be up to us. But are we going to keep it? it? It seems like it is a little higher than other counties. Yeah. And is that what we're going to keep? Well, we, the next budget, the next committee can make that decision. So my, my feeling is the decision was made for a lot of good reasons because there's three of them. It didn't really fit. We had a new guy on and we had an old guy on, and, and they said we would rather meet at a range two at that time anyway, range two, and all make the same thing. It's better politically for us if we all make the same thing. And it's hard to judge whether one commissioner should make less or not. And they, and <coughs> I would say it'd be easier to stick with that. And then if we give a cost of living increase, they'd be included in the cost of living let, let me, there's two kind of two questions you ask. Yeah. Well, there's mm -hmm. the pay plan, is the pay plan appropriate? Yeah. Yeah. Should they get an increase or not? And what I want to say, because you made a common mistake that perpetuates in our community, it seems higher than other counties. The law doesn't require us just to compare to other counties. That's one of the conditions that we compare to. When you consider all the factors in the law, it's not high. The reason why, and if you look at those comparables in those other counties, you'll see this, is that commissioners tend to be more politically influenced about whether they take pay raises or not as compared to other elected officials. You'll see that in most counties, an assessor who has one department and one function, in, even in our county, makes more than a county commissioner. The assessor does. And that's kind of telling about the political pressure. That's the reason why our commissioners agreed. They didn't want, they didn't want to deal with the politics of it, so they agreed. The pay plan's appropriate based on the law. And the law isn't just other counties. So I want to make sure you don't say, well, it seems higher than other counties, because people say that all the time. We don't just compare to other counties. It's a factor. But the other factor is internal comparisons, it's private business comparisons, and state offices of similar responsibility. And when you consider all of those things, that pay plan is appropriate. It's comparable. I gave you the page of the range of commissioners because that's how it used to be done before the commissioners that everyone qualifies they got this raise and 
I can't remember what year it was, 08, I think. Because before 08, our county didn't follow the law. And most counties don't follow the law. That's what I was just saying. Are the other counties not following the law? Well, some counties don't even know there's a law, frankly. I mean, I don't okay. mean to be rude, but I mean, I've heard conversations from Josephine County that there isn't a law, that they should be able to compare to the average wage of a, a citizen. You know, and that's, there is a law. So, right. in, so no, a lot of counties don't follow the law. And that's one of the problems why you see the comparison not right. being, if you just use other counties, you see the comparison. Now, I'm not telling you it's a good salary or a bad salary. That's not, what I'm telling you is it meets the requirements of the law. If people don't like that, what they should do is go get the law changed and change what the law requires us to compare to, and then the salary will change. Um, but you know, if you're following the law and making your recommendation based on the law, then this pay, the, the pay plan, this, the, the range of pay, is appropriate. <clears throat> um, so two different things, and I think. Uh, my personal opinion is I think you should leave the pay plan in place for the reason of COLA, but also because you could have a board that comes in and says, we don't want, we, we're not going to do this. We want to be treated like every other elected official in the pay range. We want all the other considerations that the law requires us to have. They've made an individual decision not to do that, and they're, they're allowed to do that. When they do that, when they either don't take a pay raise, we require them to provide us written notice of that because it happened in some counties where people waived their right to a pay raise and then when they got out of office went back and sought recourse against the county to be refunded for the pay that they were due. I mean, so we have uh, several steps we have to go through that are in addition to the board order if that happens to cover ourselves legally and uh, you know, uh, uh, physically so that we're not burdened with a future liability from it. Uh, but I think having the range you know, it keeps all of those other considerations standard, not just the comparison with other counties. It keeps us in the market for all the qualifications the law requires you to look at. April, to answer your question, I think, as I think about maybe your question is, yes, we could reinstate the, the increases. And that's why we pegged their salary at range two in their category any time in the future. You said, well, I don't agree with this. And three people, the budget com uh, this committee met, and the people said, no, we, they're gonna, we're going back to the step increases. It's easy to re-implement it because the salary they're making is in range two, and that will be true as long as they get the living increases that other people are getting. And so you got that opportunity if you want it. I just don't recommend it based on my experience with commissioners and all the things that uh, I've seen. I mean, I've not seen three commissioners get together and somebody doesn't want to play politics and say, I'm not going to take any wages or I'm only going to take 80% of it or I'm going to do this. And this was a way to say, hey, you're all, if this is the pay, and uh, if you don't want it, you don't have to take it. 